Hello, this is Mrs. Johnson. This is MAT 221. We're in section 3.9. This is video two of um, section 3.9 on linearization. So we were talking about this example of a circle and um, that the radius was increasing by a very small change. We came up with the derivative of the area of the circle with respect to R. And then we used our process of differentials saying that if I have a very small change in R, then I can think of this as a fraction and I can separate these two pieces and think of each piece as a differential. Usually we would not be able to take these pieces apart, but if we think of dr as a very small change in R, then we can think of dA as a very small change in A. We can cross multiply this equation and get this result. Now we look and see what do we have in our function we have in our given information. We're given at this particular point in time that the radius is 10, so we could substitute 10 in for the radius. We're also given at this instant in time that the radius is increasing by a very small amount, dr, a very small change in the radius, so we could substitute that value in for dr. When we do, we get this expression which will answer our question. It says approximately how much will the area change? Well, the change in area is dA. It's a very small change in the area. And it will change by this amount when we do the math is approximately 2 pi. Now this is an approximate change because we don't have any units here. We just said that the circle, circle of radius 10, we don't know what the units are. We don't know what the time is. We don't know, we just know that this is relative here. And this is considered a, an approximation. This is approximately how much the area will change. This is an application of using what's called differentials. Now, I want you to look at your worksheets from this unit. Um, there's a worksheet on linearization. The first couple of things in the linearization worksheet just goes through the process of linearization that I did earlier here. But I wanted to look at examples 6, 7, and 8. It says use the tangent line to the curve at x equals 5 to find a linear approximation to the estimate the value of f of 5.12 if you're given that the curve is equal to this. So I wanted to show you a couple of examples of linearization. The first two are actually not as powerful as the last, but what we're going to do is we're going to find the linearization or the tangent line to the curve of this curve at x equals 5 and then use that linear equation to estimate the value of the curve at 5.12. Now in today's day and age we could just substitute 5.12 into this equation and find it on our calculator or computer easily. However back when Leibniz and Newton were discovering this they did not have computers or, or um, calculators to easily find these. So this is an easy way for them to do a quick estimate to the value of the curve near this point of tangency. Now I want you to notice it'll only work here because 5.12 is a very small change away from the point of tangency at x equals 5. So here's our process. The first thing we're going to look at is find the equation of the tangent line to the curve or find the linearization near um, x equals 5. In this case, remember the linearization is the equation of the tangent line, which is y equals the slope minus x1 um, plus the value of the curve there. Actually, we should change this. Let me change this to uh, this is the value of a. There we go. Now I've changed it here. So I have my linearization formula where a is equal to the value of the x-coordinate given here at x equals 5 f of a is the y-coordinate here at x equals 5, and f prime of a would be the slope of the curve of this curve at x equals a. All right, so let's go through the process. To find this, um, we would need to find the value of the function at 5 first. So we want to find f at a. f at a is going to equal f at 5, which if we put it into here is going to be this, which is this equation right here. The next thing we need to know is find the derivative of this function. And you guys, after unit, this much of this unit, you're very good at finding your derivatives. I wrote this as x to the negative 3, so I could easily find the derivative. So here's the derivative. 
Then we're going to evaluate the derivative at x equals 5. So we get a value here. And now we're going to put those values into this linearization formula. So the slope of the curve goes here. The value of a, which is 5 in this case, goes here. The value of the function at 5 goes here. So we put this into the equation. So the tangent line to the curve at x equals 5 will equal this. This is the linearization of the curve. It is the tangent line to the curve, which is called the linearization or the linear approximation formula. Now, how we use this formula is now I want to evaluate what do I think the value of the curve is at 5.12. Well, what I do is I use this line instead of this function. I could use this linearization or this line to put in 5.12 in here for x to then give me a good approximation for the value of the function at 5.12. So I'm putting a 5.12 in there, which is very easy to subtract. You can see it's just 0.12. Multiply it by this 30.0336, then add 74.94 to get this. This is my linear approximation, or using the tangent line to the curve to approximate the value of the curve at 5.12. It is called the linearization. Now, just for our own purposes, I'm going to actually use my calculator and computer to figure out what's the actual value. What's the actual value of f of 5.12 if I put it into the actual function? And I put it in and I got this. Notice my linearization is a little bit lower than the actual value of the curve. What that tells me is a couple of things. It tells me that my curve must be concave down at this point, excuse me, concave up at this point, because the tangent line to the curve is going to be a little bit below the actual value of the curve. But notice the linearization gives me a pretty good approximation to the curve, really close approximation to the curve, by putting it into the tangent line to the curve near the point of tangency. All right, let's try another one. If I said use the linear approximation centered at t equals 2 to approximate or estimate j of 2.14, again, you can see I can use linear approximation because we're looking the point of tangency is at 2, but I want to look at 2.14, a very small distance away from the point of tangency. So I can use a good, this will be a good approximation of the tangent of the value of the curve at 2.14. So we start with the tangent line to the curve. We use that linearization formula, or we can use that original formula that we had for the equation of a line. We need the value of the function at x equals 2, so I put 2 into the function. Now, if I didn't have a calculator or a computer, I could leave it exactly in exact form here for natural log, which is exactly what Newton and Leibniz do, did before they did approximations. But I used my calculator here. Then I find the derivative of this curve, which again, you guys are pretty good at getting the derivative. You can see the derivative of this curve. Next, I find the, the value of the derivative at the point of tangency at x equals 2. So I found that derivative at x equals 2. Now I put it into my linearization formula here. So at the tangent line to the curve at x equals 2 is equal to the slope, which was 26.25 times t minus the point of tangency was x equals 2, minus the y-coordinate there, which was our y-coordinate at 2, which was 18.5226. This is the linearization to the curve at x equals 2. It is the linear approximation formula for this curve near x equals 2. It is the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2, or t equals 2. Now what would they want us to do is use that equation of a line to approximate what the value of the function is at 2.14, which is very close to 2. So we're going to substitute this into the linearization formula, the linear approximation formula. So we put in 2.14 in for t. Again, we have all numbers here. This again is a really easy subtraction of 0.14 multiplied by 26.25 added to 18.5226, which gives me 22.1976. There is our linear approximation using our linear approximation formula 
to find the approximate value of the function at 2.14. Now, let's find the actual value again because we can. The actual value of the curve at 2.14, if we put it into the original formula, is equal to 22.4256. Again, the linearization is a little bit of an underestimate, which means that the tangent line to the curve must have lied below the curve, which means the curve must have been concave up there. Again, this is the linear approximation of the value of the function at that particular point at 2.14. Now, this last example, actually, you might see the power more in the linearization formula, because often in life, especially in business, we're given a specific point in time, say today, 0, 4. We'd say at today, time 0, my cost of my function of my um, of my company, the costs for my company is about four hundred thousand or forty thousand dollars. So I put a four there. And at this particular point in time, I know I might know how the cost is changing. In this case, it might be changing by fifty thousand dollars per every additional month in my function. So notice I don't have an actual function here. I just have data about the actual value of the function at a given point and how that function is changing or how my cost is changing at that particular point in time. Notice I don't have a function though, but I can still use the linear approximation formula to estimate what my um, cost will be 0.25 days from now or 2.25 months from this point in time. So we're again going to use the same idea here we're first going to find the tangent line to the curve. And notice I don't have a function here, but I have enough information that I can find the tangent line to the curve because I know the rate of change, which is the derivative there. I know the point of tangency is at zero at t equals zero or x equals zero. And I know the value of the function there is equal to four. So I know enough information to fill in this formula. When I fill in this formula, for I want to estimate the tangent line first at the point of tangency, which is zero, given right here. So I put in zero. What is f of zero? Well, f of zero was negative five, in this case, h of zero. The um, value of the function at zero was equal to four, and the point of tangency was at x equals zero, or in this case, a equals zero. Simplifying this formula, I have the tangent line to the curve at x equals zero is equal to this. A nice easy for formula for the linear equation. Now we're going to use that linear approximation formula to now guess what the value of this function will be when x equals 0.25. So we're going to put x equals 2.25 into this equation to find the value of the function there. At this particular point, we get 2.75. So notice I didn't have an equation here, but I can still figure out that in about 0.25 of a month or a year or whatever my unit happens to be here, my function will be about 2.75. My cost function might be about 2.75. This is the linearization of h equals 2.5 here in this case. All right, this concludes what I'm going to talk about for section 3.9. So work on your web assign for this particular section. Have a good day.